Hello, and welcome back to another episode of What's in the Pipe. I'm your host, Marissa Davis. And joining me today, we have G2's team of regulatory experts, Al Giordano, Wally McGaughy, and Stephanie Mayberry. Also joining us today, we have a special guest speaker. Her name is Stephanie Sherry. She's Corporate Cybersecurity and Compliance Manager at Country Mark. Thank you all for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Al, the first question is for you. What is driving the renewed focus on control room cybersecurity? Thanks, Marissa. There's a couple different things right now that are driving the uh, renewed focus in control room cybersecurity. So recently, FEMSA stated that cybersecurity has become a focal point for the agency with the multiple cyber attacks that have occurred on pipelines. Most recently, there's been a, an attack on a gas distribution operator wherein the operator lost control of the pipeline for a short amount of time. Uh, additionally, with more operators moving to a remotely located control room, uh, pipeline operations are uh, more greatly impacted by cyber attacks. Uh, FIMS has published an advisory bulletin that's, that deals with safeguarding and securing pipeline facilities, uh, both from a physical and cyber security perspective. FIMS recognizes that the, the cyber threat is real um, and is happening currently, and they want to make sure that pipeline operators are taking the proper steps to protect their assets. And what can or should operators do to ensure that their system is safe from cyber attacks? Stephanie, you want to take this one? Thanks, Marissa. Sure. No system safe 100% from all cyber attacks. On a daily basis, we have new vulnerabilities. Taking a proactive approach is the best. Always harden your systems. Make sure your signatures are up to date. I would look for a software that can handle a zero-day vulnerability and threat. That's pretty important. So if we make sure that we have the, uh, the right protocols in place for hardware and the physical security of the actual control room, then we're doing the best we can. Does FIMSA inspect control rooms for cybersecurity, Al? No, so currently there are no regulations for inspection of cybersecurity as part of a control room. Uh, pipeline operators are required to make sure that their assets are safe at all times. Uh, cybersecurity, again, like I said before, has become a renewed interest in FEMSA. Um, they're, they're making it a focal point of, of control room inspections here moving forward. Uh, they are going to be asking operators uh, questions about what they're doing about cybersecurity, but, but there is no regulatory basis for cybersecurity. Uh, however, there is multiple industry, uh, multiple industry publications have been put out regarding cybersecurity and what steps operators should take. And Wally, what will FEMSA be asking during these control room security sessions? So FEMSA has launched an initiative to inspect 100% of the control rooms here in the United States. Began here in 2020. It's going to go out for the next couple of years. Uh, they've decided now it, during those inspections that they're, they've brought to the table a series of questions, uh, exploratory type questions. That they're not inspection questions. There's no code citation attached to them. Uh, basically, what's what's going on is FIMS is trying to see where we stand right now, where our cybersecurity uh, protections in the pipeline industry are uh, in, in relation to the threat that we're facing. FIMS themselves are not pursuing writing regulations for that, but they are working in concert with the Transportation Security Administration and their sub-agencies uh, in pursuing additional regulatory authority for asking operators to, to build these type of systems. The threat is uh, extremely great and the risk is tremendous. I also wanted to mention that some of these questions and answers are based on something that you and I have been uh, training many control rooms for some years now. And, and it can be as simple as don't use the same password to sign on the SCADA system for all controllers. You know, that's, that's very true, Stephanie. And as well, uh, some of the things we don't think about, uh, and even as controllers and operators in the control center, or, or those folks that work with them, their IT staff, their SCADA programmers, their PLC programmers, uh, who you talk to out in the world, what information mm -hmm. you share with folks out there, even on social media, uh, mm -hmm. becomes extremely important to, to keep close and, and not share uh, certain pieces of information. That brings up yeah. a good point to involve your security person or your infrastructure or IT team and be prepared and really familiarize yourself with your environment um, prior to these conversations. And what else can operators do to maintain vigilance on their systems? Stephanie Sherry? So in my opinion, this is a three-part process and it involves basic system updates, access controls, and training. 
So as Stephanie mentioned before, no system is 100% safe from cyber attacks. So the first thing you wanna do is keep your systems patched and isolated from others on the network. The second thing is having strict access controls. Uh, think unique logins for each user, ensuring accounts are deactivated promptly when someone leaves the company and making sure access to the control room is locked down and managed. The last thing and what I feel like is the most important thing is personnel training. Your operators should review all guidance provided by FEMSA and TSA with regards to cybersecurity and cyber awareness. It's not enough to just check annual security awareness training off the list each year. Operators need to understand and be trained to what to look for with regards to cyber attacks. And they also need to understand how security relates to their job because that's that's what's going to make them think and respond. The next thing that they need is an incident response plan in place so that they know who to contact whenever there is a suspected incident. So lastly, periodic drills and exercises to go over your security plan to remind operators um, what to do with a suspected incident. The importance of training can't be stressed enough I almost liken it to an emergency response type of a drill where um, you drill for a spill or an incident to minimize the downtime, maximize the reaction time, and, and minimize the impact of the incident. You know, that same mindset should be taken to cybersecurity as well. Controllers should be trained to recognize and react to a potential cyber attack, uh, hoping to minimize any you know, potential damages that may occur based on that. And in any cyber attack is very critical that we preserve the evidence so that we can actually trace who the attacker is. Do you guys have any other thoughts you'd like to share before we wrap it up? I think every control room should put a security plan in place. It could be an addendum to a master corporate security plan and that security plan should include uh, possibly active shooter training, uh, physical security, and cybersecurity. I think this is going to become the new normal moving forward. Everything is web-based. Everything runs off the internet. And operators need to be aware and take precautions to protect their systems. Training is going to be of the utmost importance, making sure that your controllers know how to recognize and react to a cyber threat uh, in order to both protect the asset, preserve evidence, and, and minimize any damage to the system. And lastly, I think it's extremely important that operators understand don't wait on regulations. Don't mm -hmm. wait on some government agency to come up and tell you that you need to do these things. These are real threats existing today that need to be addressed today. Well, let's wrap it up right there for today. Thank you all for joining me and a special thanks to you, Stephanie Sherry. It was great to have your input as well. Remember folks, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our LinkedIn group to continue the conversation. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep it flowing. It's under control.